so much for coming. We're super happy to have you. It's going to be an amazing couple of days. You know, <coughs> Martin said that we're about to go through one of the most important phases of development in all of our careers and for all of our companies. And normally, when you come to a TSIA event, our goal is to send you home with answers. My goal today is a little bit different. My goal today is to get you to start asking yourself questions that you didn't know you needed to ask yourself. This conference theme, reimagining the B2B customer life cycle in the age of AI, is going to be exciting, scary, troublesome, rewarding, every adjective you can think about. Let me ask you a question, show of hands. Have you already been asked this question? Who's been asked this question? Okay. Who thinks they're gonna get asked this question in the next 12 months? Okay. So everybody's either been asked or you know you're gonna get asked. I guarantee you, the board is asking, right? The CFO is going to start asking. And I want to talk today about what's at stake around your answer to that question. Who has a customer journey map, life cycle, drawing that looks something like this, right? It's a frickin' disaster. It's like, for customers, interacting with our company is like a frontal lobotomy. Right? It is just nuts. So what do we do? Well, in the land phase, our salespeople promise a chauffeured, experience, right? Gonna take care of you, great team of people, you're our most important customer, call me night or day, the chauffeured experience. In the adopt, expand, and renew part of the life cycle, we kind of try a little bit of a different approach. More self-service, more digital, more Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't, we trot out the chauffeurs. And that is how sales and services labor grew to become the number one expense at your company. It is. We spend more by far on sales and services labor to shield customers from this crazy life cycle more than we spend on R&D, more than we spend on advertising, more than we spend on anything else. Because what we have always done is put employees into the customer life cycle to work with customers and we gave the employees tools. We gave the salespeople CRM. We gave the PS people PSA, right? But they fronted all that complexity, and we gave them tools to help do it more efficiently. And that's what we thought about. How can tools make our people more efficient, right? That was kind of the, the primary thought, right? I'm here to tell you that soon AI technology is going to be able to serve customers across this life cycle in profound new ways. And our people, their primary job is gonna to be to support the technology 
to train the technology, to manage the technology, to look at it like it's an employee. Is it doing its job correctly? Does it need retrained? Does it need access to new data, right? Those are gonna be the most important roles in the company. We believe that finally, after many years of trying, we're actually about to launch the digital first B2B customer lifecycle. Truly, truly. All you have to do is look at your headcount totals to know that we have so far been largely unsuccessful. Now, there are many reasons why we're in the boat that we're in. Dealing with us from the very beginning is super tough, right? Imagine a customer trying to get a price, right? Think of all the shenanigans that goes on for a customer to get a price. Super difficult, super difficult. Then they get the product, and it's a super complex, hard to use product. And they need all of our services and all the experts and all the things. And our organizations are huge and complicated. We have tons of people, and there is no phone book. Like, when the customer needs something done, who do they call? So often, depending on what it is, they start off by calling their salesperson. And then the salesperson calls a buddy, and the buddy calls somebody else who knows who to talk to to get this question answered for the customer. It, it's super painful. It takes a long time. There's a lot of people involved in every step. And that's how we got to this. That's how we got to this. And it isn't just our complexity. It's the customer's complexity. They have their legacy systems, their legacy workflows, data problems, their policies and regulations, all of these things. And our complexity and their complexity interoperate and ebb and flow throughout the life cycle. So we create roles and we create more roles, and we create more roles. We create deal desks, right? We create technical specialists. We have good old relationship Rob, the person in the sales process who said, I'm here for you, call me on any issue, take care of it, and then Rob is busy trying to hit the number and goes away for a while until I want to buy something again, and there's relationship Rob, right? So that's how we got to where we are. We had an incredibly complex environment. The customers had a complex environment, and we stationed people in between the two functions, right? Here's your product, here's the customer, should be a marriage, Simple marriage, it's not. And we put people in the equation all the way along through land, adopt, expand, renew. It's gonna change. It's gonna change. Now, as the village elder, I can tell you that there have been other technologies that have come along in the past that we said are gonna change everything email, right? There was actually a day before email. <laughs> email was going to change everything. We were going to be able to, you know, radically reduce the number of people we had because we were going to have email. And the skeptic would say, hey, all these other miracle technology cures, they didn't work. They didn't work. Why didn't they work? Because often these other channels 
weren't effective customer experiences. And CSAT, if we drove the customer to one of these other things, it cost us. It cost us. In the AI digital first B2B customer life cycle, customer satisfaction is going to go up. And I am telling you, that one statement right there is going to change so much. It's going to be a better customer experience. Customers are going to get to value faster. We're going to engineer complexity out of this life cycle, complexity out of our products. And it's going to allow us to reduce our cost to serve. And we've seen pilots that already prove this. If you can't read this, this is a, an AI pilot that one of our members launched. And it says two things. It says 50% increase in call deflection, 14% increase in customer satisfaction. That's because the next generation of AI agents, AI and agents, are going to be able to learn and simplify your complexities. They're going to be able to reason and act. They're going to be able to personalize and customize. And they're going to be able to iterate interrelate with customers without latency, without holds, without callbacks, in the language they want, in a tone they like, across voice, chat, text, every channel you can think of, inbound, outbound. They're going to be able to create an individual customer experience for your customers that even our best people struggle to do. So, just in the next 12 months, if you haven't already seen some of the stuff that's coming down the pike, I just got an email this morning about how many AI SaaS startups have been funded in the last two or three years. It's in the thousands. And every large company, everybody in that expo floor is working on AI components to their solutions. And some of it is incredible. It's just incredible stuff. And it's going to affect sales. And it's going to affect services. And it's coming like, not five years from now, some of it is here now. You know, I normally don't plug, but if you haven't watched the sales Mark Benioff keynote at Dreamforce, you're missing something. Microsoft yesterday announced their own AI agents, right? And it's going to come from vendor after vendor after vendor after vendor. And what these technologies are able to do is stunning. In many cases, customers will prefer, will prefer the experience they have because they're going to get a hyper-knowledgeable, hyper-personalized experience. So how is this going to play out? You know, I would imagine almost everybody is at this stage right now. So I have a customer, my customer is interacting with my employees, and as we've always done, we've tried to give the employees technology that helps them be more efficient. Right now, we're all experimenting with AI technologies to help our employees be more efficient and effective. Show of hands. Okay, everybody, right? But now, we're starting to get AI to be more and more and more capable. And very soon, you will take parts 
of customer interactions and you will trust them to AI. So you'll have people collaborating with AI and those two together will create a transaction with the customer. But you'll start to trust part of that transaction to AI. So it'll be a collaboration between a person and an AI to be able to create an effective customer interaction and do it in efficient and effective ways. And then you're going to get another part of the transaction and you're going to get AI to do that. And then another part of the transaction and you're going to get AI to do that. And soon you're going to create AI that is autonomous that can handle the whole transaction. And as I said before, do things potentially better and more efficiently and more effectively and create higher customer satisfaction than the old way. And somebody correctly, a very wise man, corrected me yesterday in the executive board meeting about this phase. And he said, hey, the, you know how you have the customer still a person? It may not be a person. It may be their AI agent working with your AI agent. So what are you going to do? Are you going to like go on this journey, phase one, phase two, phase three? Or are you going to go from a cold start to the latest and greatest technology? What are you going to do? And how long is it going to take you to go on this journey? Now, there's always going to be, there are, my mother would kill me, there are always going to be humans in the loop. But how many and doing what? How many and doing what? Remember I asked you the, the question? The question that's coming your way? The answer you give is going to be so important. And I would invite you to ask yourself two questions. What is AI going to allow us to stop requiring people to have to do? What is it going to allow us to stop doing using people? And then you have to ask yourself, what is AI going to help your people to start doing things they haven't been able to do before, experiences they haven't been able to create before. And those two thought processes create the job math of AI. What is AI going to help us stop doing? That's cost takeout. What is AI going to help us start doing that creates more value for customers, leads to market share gains, leads to revenue growth, improves gross margins? The math of those two things are going to determine how many people in your organization get to stay, how many people in your organization get to go. And you know whose job it is to answer that question? You and us, right? When the CFO walks in the door, I'm going to go back to the job math. When the CFO walks in the door and asks you that question, which of these two things is he hoping to hear? Right? And if that's all you got, if that's all you got, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Now, not all the employees are going to be able to make a transition from what they used to do to what you need them to do. But every one of them deserves a chance to make a transition, but only if you've identified what the destination is, 
for these people, what skills are required, what training is needed, right? It's us. It's us. It's not somebody else. It's not the CFO. It's our ability to answer that question in the most compelling way. I want to put a new word into your lexicon. Under-advantaged. And here's our definition of under-advantaged. The gap between what you could be doing with AI versus what you are doing with AI. I'm here to tell you, we're here to tell you, as a community of companies, we are super lumpy on this issue. There are so many companies who say, well, a year ago we were doing nothing around AI. Now we're doing this much, so we're feeling pretty good. That's under-advantaged. Under-advantaged is a competitive threat to your business that is going to walk up and pow, whack you in the head at some point in the future. So what is your plan to drive major improvements in your results? Did you notice I did not say what is your plan for AI to drive major cost reduction? That's a part of the answer. It is a part of the answer. But it's not the whole answer. I would suggest to you that you have to question everything because of what's about to come. 18 months ago, you were the master of what your organization did. Today, we are all students again. We are all students again. And the only teachers that are available are each other. You can pay McKinsey all you want. Do you think they're going to come in and lay out the answers? No. No, sorry. We're going to get the answers by working together. What Martin said about patterns of success and patterns of failure. But the questions you have to ask yourself, the answer you have to give, has to consider the cost side, the revenue side, how you price, what the life cycle could be, not what it was. 90% of the people I've talked to on this subject, when I ask them how AI is going to affect their business, they talk about efficiency. Taking the old model and applying AI to it to make it more efficient. Well, that's part of what's going to happen. But really, if you stand back and you say, why do we need to do this thing we've always done? Can we just stop doing it? Can we take those resources and deploy it into a different customer experience that is going to impact our revenue? How are we going to price that experience? Right? How are we going to bring the channel partners into that experience? I'll tell you some things that we believe The size of the vendor workforce across the life cycle is going to go down. It is. How much it goes down depends on your ability to answer the question. The net net is, it's going to go down. You know all these, I live in Silicon Valley. You know all these layoffs at all these, you know, many of your companies. If you think that's a one-time deal related to the economy, it's an ongoing trend, and it's not going to stop anytime soon. AI is going to accelerate this trend. What about our ability to monetize the services that you offer today? We get these AI agents performing these incredible customer experience tasks across the life cycle, maybe not on the support portal, 
maybe in the product itself. How long before customers begin to question what they're paying for your support and maintenance contract when they're having these ubiquitous, high-scale digital experiences through the product? What's the difference between the product and technical support or adoption, customer satisfaction, education, excuse me, uh, customer success, education, and so forth? Our ability to monetize traditional services in the way we have been is at risk. So what do we have to do? We have to stand up new value propositions inside our current portfolio of service offers and in addition to our current portfolio of service offers. So I promise you there's going to be revenue pressure around services as a result of AI. You already probably see it in areas like education services, right? The ability to monetize that. People are bundling services together to reinforce the total value of the services because there's also a concern about some of the value of the individual services. That will continue. We also believe if you attach services and price them based on product pricing, maintenance as a percentage of product revenue, excuse, you know, so forth and so on, we think the very fundamental elements of product pricing are going to change. Who is going to cling to user license, user-based pricing when our customers are reducing their headcount because of their own implementation of AI? Literally, customers could be saying, here's a thousand licenses back, I don't have those employees anymore. Salesforce's new agent force technology is based on consumption. It's a fee for every time you have an AI agent engage with a customer. Um, what is that going to mean if you attach service pricing to product pricing? We're going to have to rethink the math. And the pricing power that companies have had may go down. Now, the good news is the scalability of your company is going to go crazy up, crazy up. The weird time is the next year or two because right now we have to pay the bills for our tinkering with AI and we still have all the people because we have yet to translate the AI into the cost reductions, the promise of the cost reduction. So right now we have both bills to pay, right? And that's going to happen for a year or two. People aren't going to be happy about it, but it's going to happen. But we're going to come out the other side with the potential for super scalable economic models. I suggest we believe answering the question by saying, oh, I'm going to take our current life cycle and just make, make it a little more efficient is truly, it's not just a threat to your company, it's a threat to the people that work for you. Um, we've got to have answers that are so powerful, so well considered. Imagine a competitor of yours who gets super aggressive on this, the product, their product and your product and their price and your price are pretty similar, but they get super aggressive on this. And they build a customer life cycle that's actually more rewarding to the customer and costs 40% less for them to deliver it than what you're paying. And all of a sudden, their product is like your product and their price is 50% of your product. That's not the same competitive landscape 
that you had at the beginning of this. Companies can apply major, major, major price pressure by simply attacking the number one cost on the income statement, which is service and sales labor. And they will. SaaS companies are being built in completely new models. You know, there's a, there's a you know, thing about what's going to be the first billion dollar revenue company with one employee. Right? Now, you know, not realistic that they're going to come and take away your business, your ch move your cheese overnight. But the point is, this is going to be big. I implore you not to be this person. Not us, not me, not PS, not in the healthcare industry, not in, don't be that. It is, it's coming, and it's going to be super profound. I have to tell you, I didn't know it at the time. TSIA was built for this moment. This community and putting it together, as Martin said, we're under NDA with all of you. You're telling us what you're trying. You're telling us what's working. We're able to take a lesson from you and a lesson from you and a lesson from you and figure out a pattern of success and a pattern of failure and play it back to all of you. We were built for this moment. This community, all of you, were built for this moment. And so you came here working on, you know, working with us, hopefully, on the stuff that you were focused on to take the current model and make it more efficient, more effective, better. And to avoid the trial and error route the, that Martin was referring to, right? Learning, best, adopting best practices and doing all those things. That's what you came to this conference doing. And I'm telling you, there is a major new direction coming. And those two dots, see how close those two dots are? That's where we think this is, that close. And so you can either carry on, carry on, or you can ask yourself these super difficult questions and participate with everybody in this community to try to build the answers. We are all students, and the only teachers that are going to help us get through this are each other. I want you to be that person when the question comes. I want you to be that person when the question comes. We can do it. We can do it. We will do it. But I want you to understand the scope of what we think is at stake. It isn't the advent of email. It isn't the advent of voicemail. This is something different. Now, as part of that journey as a community, we, TSIA, has got to use AI to make it faster and better for us to go through this learning cycle together. We can't take 18 months to figure this out. So we have made major investments in technology over the last couple years, and what you're going to see roll out from us starting next month is going to be pretty cool stuff. You know, many of you have done benchmarks with us, right? And benchmarking has always been a long, laborious process. Well, we have something new called the Performance Optimizer. And it is a digital experience that not, not only does benchmarking and diagnose, diagnostics, but it also then prescribes everything you should be doing on all of the weak areas in our diagnosis of you. We're going to prioritize that using AI to determine which of the things that you could be doing have the greatest potential. And we're going to do that both with technology and people and you. 
And then once we have the prioritized list of things to work on, our AI technology will help literally produce step-by-step -step how to go do some of these things. But we're not stopping there. We're launching something new called TSIA Intelligence. We are using the power of chat GPT with a TSIA small language model that is only available to the member companies and it has all of the content, all of the data that TSIA has ever created. The first thing you're gonna see starting this quarter is something called an AI-powered content assistant. Every piece of content that you get on the TSIA portal, you're gonna see TSIA intelligence. You click on that, you can not only say, hey, summarize, I don't wanna read a 20-page document, summarize this document for me, and it's gonna instantly summarize the document. Then you're gonna be able to interrogate the research. You're gonna be able to start asking questions and our chat GPT with TSIA model on top of it is gonna to begin to answer your questions about that piece of research. What's coming after that is AI-powered, unlimited inquiry. What I mean by that is any employee in your company is gonna be able to go to this AI agent and ask it any question and do it as many times as you want. Right now, inquiry at TSIA, talking to our researchers, you only get to do that a certain number of times. You like hide it over here so that, you know, somebody else doesn't take away your credit for that inquiry. We're gonna put the knowledge of this community on the table for every one of your employees to use every single day. Think about the power of increasing the batting average of every decision in your services organization, every decision in every part of the life cycle. How many of all the decisions that get made, how many of them can afford to hire McKinsey? I'm not picking on McKinsey, right? Very often, we make decisions based on our experiences of the past. We make the best decisions we can, that's exactly right. The next set of decisions can't be just based on the experience of the past. The experience of the past could be our biggest enemy, right? Does that make sense to you? And, and not just us, but the C-suite. If the C-suite starts thinking about these new challenges using their 30 years of experience in the old life cycle, that's no bueno. We've all got to learn to think differently, and we need to work together as a community to get new answers, to ask new questions, and to navigate the digital first B2B customer website. Thank you very much.